We begin with a discussion on the issue making headlines. Former Vice President Joe Biden became the presumptive Democratic presidential nominee last week after Vermont Sa uh, Sen Senator Bernie Sanders dropped out of the race. For now, Biden has led President Donald Trump in every national poll taken over the past month. But history, especially 2016, has shown us that polls are often wrong. And there's another six months until the November election. So what lies ahead for President Trump and his rival Joe Biden? To find out, we connect with Dr. Charles Zeldin, Professor of History at Nova Southeastern University, joining us from Florida, and Dr. Mark Shanahan, Associate Professor of Politics at the University of Reading in the UK. Well, my first question to you, Dr. Zeldin. Before Biden can actually uh, shift his entire focus to Trump, the former vice president has to try and win over Bernie's supporters. Do you think they'll be inclined to back him straight away? I mean, what kind of messaging will uh, Biden have to project or what are the main agendas that he needs to address to gain solid support from his party? Well, the first thing to understand is that there's a small percentage of, of Bernie supporters, maybe 5%, maybe 10 if Biden's unlucky, 15%, that simply will not vote for him. The best he can hope for is they just don't show up. Uh, there's probably about 45 to 50 percent that already plan on voting for him, whether they like him or not, because they want to vote against Trump. So we're really only talking about 25 to 30 percent of Bernie supporters who are going to need a little bit of wooing. And some of this can be done through uh, policy statements and, most importantly, through who he picks as his vice presidential running mate. So you say about a third of Bernie Sanders supporters um, will need a bit more convincing um, in order to support uh, former Vice President Joe Some, Biden. Yeah, some, yeah. Uh, uh, they, they really like Bernie, but they also don't like Trump. So mm. it's going to be a, a question of getting them not to oppose Trump, but to show up and vote. I see. Well, Dr. Shannon, what do you think are the um, chances of Sanders supporters actually backing President Donald Trump? I think that's very low indeed. Uh, there were some in 2016 who were never Hillary. But as um, my colleague from Florida has said, they're just more likely not to turn up at all and they just won't vote. Uh, if Biden can appeal to them around issues such as health care, uh, maybe take a, a different line to President Trump around things like immigration and just be visible, be out there, be talking to the young, uh, be inspiring in the way that he struggles a little bit to be and Bernie Sanders was good at, then he is likely to win them over. The one thing is they've got four years of the Trump presidency now to look at and a lot of Democrats, a lot of the Sanders Democrats will be very fearful of another four years. And that might just push them into the Biden camp. But both you and Dr. Zeldin have said that the challenge here really will be getting those voters out of their homes and to the polling stations on, um, on election day in November. Well, Dr. Zeldin, supporters of former uh, Vice President uh, Joe Biden say that Biden really thrives on personal connections and face-to-face -face meetings, but he can't really do that now due to the uh, coronavirus pandemic, and this was actually really detrimental to Sanders' campaign. Can Biden's digital presence, though, will it be um, strong enough to beat President Trump? Yes, but mostly because I think most people are going to be voting against Trump rather than for Biden. Uh, there are a lot of people who will like Biden. He, he will give them a sense of, of a change back to something that's normal, which a lot of Americans really want right now. But ultimately, this is going to be a, 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 negative, uh, a negative partisanship campaign. It's going to be about who you're voting against more than who you're voting for, especially on the Democratic side. And so, in some ways, all Biden needs to do is just keep out of the way of the opposition to Trump. His job is to keep the focus on Trump, on what he's done, on what he's doing. And if he can do that, if he can make this a referendum on Trump, then he stands a very good chance of, of pulling off a victory. If he can't do that, if he allows Trump to do what Trump's so good at, which is change the subject, then he may have some problems. So you think the key here really is to keep the focus on President Trump and for Joe Biden to keep a rather low profile. Then how do you think that President Trump will change his campaign strategy now that he knows Biden will be his opponent? Uh, I think he's already started 
uh, which is attack Joe Biden. He's got to find something that he can stick on Biden that makes Biden look less clean, that that lowers people's respect for him. So it becomes the least worst choice. He's got to suppress the turnout in order to win because he's unlikely, the president's unlikely to win a majority victory, but he can win a plurality. And and so uh, his main focus is going to be he's slow, he's lazy, he's all, all those things until something sticks. And Biden's job is to counter them and just keep pointing at Trump and saying, see, this is the problem. Well, what about you, Dr. Shannon? What do you think um, President Trump is going to do now that he knows Joe Biden is his main um, opponent? President Trump's only means of defense is to attack. It's what he does. It's what he is extremely good at um, and getting his communication out quickly. If you look from 2015 onwards, Trump would get out early in the morning with a, a tweet. It might be something ludicrous about all Mexicans being murderers, something really appalling. But everyone in the media and all of his opponents would be talking about that all day. He would be the story. And Joe Biden has got to stop him being the story. He's going to make himself the story. He, the, who else is with him on the ticket is going to be really important. It's going to bring energy to his campaign. So whether it's an Amy Klobuchar or a Gretchen Whitmer or uh, even Florida's uh, Val Deming, the, uh, whoever it may be there, uh, this has got to raise the energy. We all know what Trump is like now. So they've got to find a different way to get around him in a way that Hillary Clinton never could. Well, Dr. Shanahan, some say that the uh, coronavirus pandemic is going to result in the uh, public desiring normalcy. Well, that's what Dr. Zeldin just said as well. Uh, they're, going, they're going to want something that's normal rather than radical change. Um, do you agree with that? Um, how would the American public really define what is normal? Is that another, four year, um, is that another uh, Trump presidency or would that be Joe Biden um, bringing America back to what's normal? Who knows what's normal now? Um, we've moved into an age of intense partisanship in America. People have moved significantly to the right in the Republican Party, the Democrats. The, the Sanders effect will be to take it some way to the left. Normalcy? Well, Trump has absolutely torn up the norms for the last four years. And we're never going to go back to a pre-Trump era. So this is going to be a dirty and aggressive campaign. Now, if Joe Biden can go back to the Joe Biden of the Obama years, of the smiling benignly in the background, looking confident, giving people confidence that he is the best person to bring the United States out of what is going to be a deep recession for a while, if he can show that he is likely to be the economic kingpin in this, maybe that's the new normal. And maybe that is where he can defeat Donald Trump. Well, I suppose we'll have to wait and see if uh, former President Obama does come and back him and um, support him very openly. Well, Dr. Zeldin, before we go, um, what do you think the American public want to see? And uh, what issues do you think the vote will really come down to in November? Uh, as I said, the key element here is, is this a vote about Trump or is this a vote about some other issue? Um, I think the current pandemic crisis and how Trump has handled it is going to play a very big role in how people are voting, uh, in motivating people to vote. I, it's not likely to change a lot of Republican voters' minds, but will it motivate everyone else to show up to vote and vote against Donald Trump? Uh, so health care, uh, dealing with a, a floundering economy, uh, and, and Biden basically trying to make the case that he can do what Obama did only better, because now we know better. And uh, to the extent that he can do that, I think he'll win. Uh, if, if he can't, if he just can't get around uh, Trump's ability to be the center of the story in the way he wants to be, then it's going to be a close race. It's going to be a close race anyhow. Well, it looks like so it's really a question of who shows up. Well, it's, it seems like we're going to have to keep an eye on the economy, though, because that has been Trump's forte. And uh, what do you think, Dr. Shanahan, um, how do you think Trump's really faring right now and what kind of challenges lie ahead for him? 
Um, well, the challenge is that he needs to get America uh, to have some kind of an exit strategy to come out of the coronavirus pandemic. He's gone into that pandemic very poorly. Uh, he underestimated the impact on the country. Um, and he's now trying to weigh up uh, the point at which saving lives has to be balanced out by restarting the economy. Uh, if he goes too early and restarts the economy and hundreds of thousands of people die, uh, Biden wins. If he manages to negotiate the United States out of a recession and has a bounce economically before November, then Trump could still win. I see. And, well, what about you, Dr. Selden? Do you think President Trump will be able to take um, America out of this pandemic or um, do so in a reassuring way that will convince voters to vote for him on election day? I, I have my doubts about that. Uh, he's getting panicky. He wants to get the economy started sooner because he wants to get things back to normal because he knows a bad economy costs him the election. But at this stage, we have lots of the United States that are only at the very beginning of the curve where the numbers are ratcheting up. If you reopen uh, social distancing and reopen society during this period, those other states, not New York, not, well, not California, those other states are going to take a big hit. And a lot of those are states that are swing states. And he just can't afford it. So he's caught literally between a hard place and a harder place, which is how do you keep, get the economy running without doing it in a way that costs lives. Because if, if he opens up the economy and there's a, a new peak to the, uh, to, the, to the deaths and the number of people with the coronavirus, uh, it's gonna doom him. Well, so with this pandemic going on, it's clear that it's going to be an election like no other really. And it's clear that both candidates are gonna get their hands very dirty during that time as well. I'm afraid that's all we have time for today. But thank you so much for starting the week with us, Dr. Charles Eldon and Dr. Mark Shannon, joining us from Florida and Reading. Thank you. Thank you. This is also where we wrap up the show today. Thank you for starting your week with us. Do join us at the same time tomorrow for more global insights on issues making headlines. Wherever you are, have a good one. Bye-bye.